Shalom, I am Rabbi Jeff of the Rock of Israel Congregation in Hickory, North Carolina, and today I've got a great video, hopefully, for you that you will enjoy and will be a blessing to you. And we're going to be looking at the name, Hashem, uh, which is Hebrew for the name. You'll see it in your Bible, uh, sometimes depending on what version you're reading, just as Lord, L-O-R-D, all in caps, or Adonai, you'll hear it uh, referred to. Uh, it's the Tetragrammaton Yud He Vav He. It's the unspeakable name, uh, so say uh, Jewish people. And it's out of a good place. Um, it's not that they don't want us to know. It's not that it's a, it's a secret, but it's out of honoring the mitzvah, the command uh, to not take the Lord your God's name in vain. A better translation of that would be uh, that you shall not desecrate the name of the Lord. So they don't want it used flippantly uh, or as a, a curse uh, word, of course, uh, that that's just goes without saying. But is it really unspeakable? Why would God tell us his name if we can't say his name, if we can't call upon the name, if there isn't something to be learned from the name? So we're going to look at something here really interesting that Yeshua himself, remember, Yeshua is God incarnate. God made flesh. He tabernacled with us. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And later uh, in that chapter, we hear that he became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So, Yeshua, and also there's other places too, in John chapter 8 and other places, it's all over uh, the Brich HaLashah, the New Testament, that Yeshua is God incarnate. So now we're going to read him in his own words uh, regarding the name from John 17, verse 26. Go ahead, Josh. I may known to them your name and will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Awesome. That is good. That, he made it known and will make it known. So it's a perpetual statement there. It's, it's always, because he is eternal. So he's always making his name known. It's not just for the Talmudim or the disciples, right? It's, it's for all of us to, to know for all time. Why? Because there's lessons in it. it, it, it all of his names. He said, you will know me by my names. And each and every one of his many, 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 many names speaks to his character and helps us to draw close to him and, uh, and know him, and that we may be known by him. So let's go and look at uh, Exodus chapter 3. Uh, this is verse 14 and 15. So go ahead, Josh. God said to Moshe, I am who I am. And he said, you shall tell the children of Israel this. I am has sent me to you. God said, moreover to Moshe, you shall tell the children of Israel this. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzhak, and the God of Yaakov has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. This is my name forever. I've made it known and I will make it known. It's a memorial. We're supposed to remember it all generations. We are part of all generations, obviously. So what is the Lord your God? This, that's the name, but that's not his name. <laughs> that's the English uh, kind of way of hiding his name, to be quite frank. So Lord, again, is the Yud Chevafe. That's the Tetragrammaton. That's the unspeakable name that we're going to learn here in a minute. And then God is uh, the English way of saying Elohim. It's the first name that God reveals in Bereshit. It's Genesis chapter 1, uh, where it says, Bereshit bara Elohim et Shemaim Charetz. In the beginning, Elohim, God, the Aleph Tav, created the heavens and the earth. So it's an important name. So what is the I am statement in uh, verse 14? Uh, it's, a, it's an explanation God has given to Moses of the yud heh vav -He. You and I aren't, that's not a name for us to use. If you're, if you're going to have an unspeakable name, that's it. Because when you put it in the first person, achaya, that's only God can say it and, and, and mean it. You know, we, we can say it and, and teach it and explain it, but I can't walk around saying that because I'm not. I'm not the self-existent one. You're not. Only he is. The only other time that's found in Scripture, it's spoken by Yeshua. And uh, the word is clear that he is God made flesh. And um, 
countless other videos we've done that, that touch on that. And uh, perhaps more that we'll do in the future because it's, it's quite amazing and, and I just love that. So the I am statement is an explanation of Ute Mafe. So how is it pronounced? Are you ready? Well, I'm going to start out by saying if you weren't there to hear Messiah himself speak it, then to an extent, there's a lot of speculation. And you can go on YouTube and watch 100 videos and get 200 different pronunciations. Uh, most commonly, we hear it pronounced as Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, of course, the first letter is a yod, so it's that's wrong. <laughs> we, we can we can absolutely say that that's wrong. Uh, the letter in Hebrew that sometimes makes the j or j sound is a gimel, uh, not the yod. So that's not it. What is it? It's Yehovah or Yehovah. How can we say that? The Jews. Are clear, are clear, and it's 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 a contraction, just like in a previous video I showed uh, the stone uh, from Isaiah, the stone that the builder rejected. That word for stone is Eben, Aleph Ben Nun. It's a contraction, the sages say, the Jews teach, of two words, Aleph, Beit, the first and second, spells Abba or Ab, right? Uh, and the, the second two, the, the ben and the noon, is ben or son. So when Yeshua says, I am the father of one, this is what he's referring to. I am the stone. The father and the son are one and together. Okay. So likewise, Yehovah is a contraction of three, uh, and I'm not a grammar expert in English, much less in Hebrew, but in the verb, to be, there's three forms. It's Chaya, Chove, and Yihye. It's Chaya, Chove, and Yihye. It literally means who was, who is, or who is, who was, and who is to come. I almost had that backwards. And think about it. In Revelation chapter one, and I didn't tell Josh to pull this up, so we won't make him go get it, but you can go read chapter one. It's the revelation of what? Scary things at the end of days. Well, certainly that is included, but it's a revelation of the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah to the Jewish people. It's Yeshua to Yochanan. Okay. And in it, he reveals that he is the Aleph Tav, and we've taught on that. And he says, I'm the first and the last, beginning and the end. He was the one in the midst of the menorah. Okay, he was the Shumash or the servant candle. All these revelations right out of the gate. And in it, he says that I am God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. There's, again, the explanation of his name. Yeshua said, I have made your name known, and I will make it known. Chaya Chove Yehova. That's his name. You can pronounce it however you want or don't pronounce it. This isn't a video telling you what to do. This is a video giving you some insight, giving you some more information, giving you deeper understanding. That's what this channel is all about. It's not about I'm right and you're wrong or this person's right. It's, it's not about division. It's about exploration. It's about getting a deeper walk with the Father. And now when you look at his name all throughout scripture from Genesis uh, chapter 22, you know, with the Akidah, the binding of Isaac, when Abraham called that place, Yehovah Yireh, the Lord shall provide. When, when we, we, we think about his names now, he, just using that one as an example, you know, right now you might have a need where you're thinking, oh God, please meet this need, and you're hoping he will. But when we know his name is Yehovah, Chaya, Chove, Ihie, we now know he is providing. He was or has provided, and he will provide. He is in an eternal state of provision for you. You can look back over your life and point to countless times where he's provided your every need. It's not just a money thing. The prosperity gospel people try to make it all about money. It's not. It includes that, but it's not about that. 
When you've needed food, Yehovah Yireh. When you needed a place to stay, Yehovah Yireh. When you needed favor in a job interview, Yehovah Yireh. Right now, maybe when you're worried about how you're gonna pay your bills, Yehovah Yireh. When you worry about your future, what's gonna happen with college or this or that or whatever it is, Yehovah Yireh, he will provide. And you can go through that through all of, of, of the names that we know or that you know, Yehovah Rophe. You need healing? He is healing you. He has healed you and he will heal you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's a blessing to you. And I hope it helps you to look at your scriptures uh, a little bit differently and a little bit deeper. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, share it. That's uh, very important. It will help other people like you that are seeking the things that we're teaching to be able to find it. It'll be a blessing to those people. So be a blessing and share it and give it a like. It helps the YouTube algorithms be able to serve this up. Make sure you visit our website. Uh, I'll have Josh put that at the bottom or in the description, uh, myroic.org. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he lift up his countenance towards you and give you shalom. God bless.